Missionary Baptist Church. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a sermon entitled, God With Us. Our primary text will be Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. The Bible says this, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Thank you all. Y'all may be seated this evening, and thank you for tuning in. When we think about the Christmas story, we must also we must think about what is Christmas really all about. It is Christ with us. It's a beautiful picture, and as, as we prepare our hearts this Christmas season, maybe you've never experienced a Christmas like this one. Maybe you've never experienced a, a, of, of, uh, just exploring how we can gather or how we can celebrate at a time like this when so many people just went through Thanksgiving, even perhaps alone. Many a family could not or chose not to gather together Many a family may have gathered, but it was just their immediate family and not the large reunions like what we have had in times past. And yet they still feel alone. I'm excited that we are able to gather together as an in-person service tonight, doing it in a safe manner. But many a church member and many a church is not open or, and they're not gathering together. And that's a difficult place to be because I don't know about you, but I, I don't like missing church. There's something that drives me here, and that something is none other than our Holy Spirit that tells me in my heart and in my soul we need to gather together. We need, to, we need each other. And there's something about whenever we get isolated, whenever we get alone, that the devil tries to creep into our mind. And, and I'm thankful that you're tuning in tonight, whether watching online or if someone's out in our parking lot, that you chose to gather with us and knowing that God is with us. But I also want you to be encouraged that you do not have to be alone. This Christmas season, as we prepare our hearts, I want you to think about that we are recognizing something that is indescribable. We are recognizing the indescribable God who is so awesome, so infinite, Lord, who exists over all, who exists over everything, and, and, and is over everything. He, he, and He loved you so much that He took on human form. Now, you all have heard the familiar story so many times that it makes it difficult, as I shared this morning for the preacher, to proclaim it in a new way that should excite us or stimulate us. But it's the Holy Ghost that you must allow to stimulate you and excite you over the fact that the Creator of the universe, over all the stars, over all the galaxies, over anything that has ever been made, chose to take on human flesh why? Why would he do such a thing? How come? What in the world would make him take on a human form like ours, walk the earth that he created, and, and, and he did it in order to show us that he knows us 
and that He can relate to you. He knew you. He didn't have to come here because He already knows what's going on in you. He didn't do it just so that um, He could experience pain and hurt and difficulty and disappointment. He knows all those things. He sees what you're going through. But He came here to show us and to display us, display to us that He is relatable. That He loves you so much that He's willing to walk where you have walked and show you and care for you. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 16 through 18 says, For verily He took not on Him the nature of angels, but He took on Him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved Him to be made like unto His brethren, that He might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that He Himself has suffered being tempted, He is able to secure them that are tempted. Consider the love that He exhibited for you. Think about how much Christ loves you. Think about how much He was willing to give of Himself. Philippians 2, 7 and 8 says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation, and took upon Him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Folks, we talked this morning about lineage. We talked about this morning about the genealogy. We talked about this morning a family tree. And folks, there is a family tree that we can all be united in and it's called the cross. And because of the cross that Jesus Christ came to this earth to bear, to hang upon, He gave of Him His self on that tree so that we can have life and have life more abundantly. That's what Christmas is all about. That's the Christmas story. It's an amazing story that He was born to die for you and for me. He knew what He had to do. That's exactly why He came here. And the death of the cross was salvation. That family tree that he hung upon, it would be the cross. And I'm so thankful for the cross. Aren't you thankful for the cross? Without the cross, there'd be no hope. From the cradle to the cross, he talked and he, and he reached out. And he was God with us. The name Emmanuel, that God was in the flesh. God was personable privately right there with every individual that, that come in contact with to talk with them and with someone you could you could relate to and he could he was showing that he was relating to you he loved you and however whenever I see this so many people today are getting isolated and folks have been asked to be isolated they've, they they've, they've been questioned to say hey we need to separate let's go into isolation and some folks are just flat out scared to come in contact with anybody. You don't believe me, just get in the checkout line and sneeze. You move up front real quick. Just see what happens. You, you know, people are, are afraid and yet they're being asked to isolate, which goes against everything that we as Christians are called to be, for we are called to assemble ourselves together and come in contact with one another so that we are reminded we are not alone for iron sharpens iron but I want to encourage you you are never ever alone if you have placed your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ hear me clearly and you may say I'm not following you in tonight's message tonight's message doesn't really apply to me listen you need to open your heart and you need to be in mindfulness and prayerfulness for those people that are isolated. Those people that feel like nobody loves me, nobody likes me, and everybody calls me names. They need to be reminded that they are loved and they are loved by God. And that's what Christmas is really all about. 
maybe we do have to tighten up. Maybe we do need to do some things to, to think through this process and all the virus and all this other stuff. I, I, I get this on, on that side, but the goal of this is in Christmas time is to be reminded that none of this stuff is taking God by surprise. He is not distanced. And while we're all wandering around saying, oh, woe is me, what are we going to do? And we're placing our faith and we're placing our trust in whatever uh, company to come out with the antidote. Jesus Christ is our antidote for He came to die for you and for me. He is our rock. He is our refuge. And no matter what happens, Folks, hear me clearly. I'm not trying to be a naysayer. I want to be an encourager. But if they've come out with something like this this time, what makes you think that they won't try to come out with some other kind of chemical warfare down the road? And what are you going to do then? I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing now. I'm going to place my faith in Jesus Christ and look on things above instead of looking at things here on earth and all the heartache and the turmoil. You've got to keep your eyes on the prize and realize that God is with us. However, I've read good news, and I want to share some of this good news with you. You're never helpless. It, you, you don't have to be alone. Matthew 123 says it this way. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being, is being interpreted God with us. Folks, that is some of the best news I could tell you. If you ever think you're all alone, if you think that you're having a hard day, if you think your life is challenging and you don't know what you're going to do, and you, uh, and I get this way too. I'm human as anybody. I get down sometimes. I get grumpy sometimes. And I just have to remind myself, today is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I, I say that as often as I can, it comes to my mind, and whenever I get down, I have to be reminded, God did not leave, God did not bring you this far to leave you. He come this far to rescue you and to, to make a way for us and to take us home. I, I'm excited about that news. This news is absolutely, it's an amazing gift. Do you realize the greatest gift that you could ever receive is the gift of Christmas, the gift of Christ? And so often we talk about the material things of this world. What do we want for Christmas? What do we want? What do we want this? And I'll tell you, the older I get, and I'm sure many, much like you all, I just like for everybody to be come together. I just like my family around me. I just want everybody to come together. And right now, that doesn't seem to be feasible. Uh, we don't have all of our family coming together. We don't have everybody surrounding. We don't have all the church back yet. That'd be a great gift. I'd love to see everybody come together. But you are not alone. For God Almighty that lives within us, He is, the, he is our Savior. He accompanies the believer. And if you're a believer in Christ, you are never alone. For the Holy Spirit dwells within you. If you... If you uh, are a believer, He equips the believer. He empowers the believer. And He is an encourager in every circumstance in life. So brothers and sisters, I want to be an encouragement to you. This Christmas, be reminded, God's with us. We're not going through these days alone. And pastor and other church folk members of sister churches, you're not alone. Please don't belittle your pastor or that congregation that has chosen not to be able to meet right now for in-person services. That's not our job to criticize or critique them. Pray for them. And be reminded you're not alone if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, but pray and rejoice in the time that we look forward to getting back together. That is an exciting thing that I'm looking forward to. And I believe that still... I want to be an encourager. Our best days are still to come. I don't know how God's going to work through this whole COVID thing. I don't know how He's going to work through the process. And many have said, I don't think the church will ever be what it used to be. Shame on you. I believe that the church is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. For the gates of hell shall not prevail. And through this pruning, through this purging, through this persecution, 
Every time when you study throughout history, when the church endured persecution is whenever it began to grow and incubate and move forward. And I believe now, more than ever, we have a great opportunity to be the church that God has called us to be. Let's step out of the box. If we've got the greatest gift and nothing like opening the box, let's open up the box of the church and let the church be ministering to those people who are alone, who are looking for help, who are looking for answers, who are looking for someone to be there with them. Let's present them with the greatest gift, and that is the gift of God Almighty, His Son, and let them accept Him so that they don't have to be alone for Christmas. The greatest gift you could receive is that of Christ. Isn't that a beautiful picture? I, I don't know if you can see that up here. I know you all can't watch him, but I love that picture. For, it is a portrayal that he was from the cross, from the cradle to the cross. God come to do what he was sent to do and send his only begotten son. Brothers and sisters, be encouragement to one another. In downtrodden times, so much we get negativity on the news. I'm here to give you good news. Get your eyes focused and get your heart focused on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for Christ. He is the reason for the season. He is the one, the only one, that brings us joy. No matter what circumstance you're in, I have found that Christ has been found tried and true. He knows what you're dealing with. He knew it before. He didn't have to come to earth to prove he could relate to you. He, he knew what you were dealing with. But yet, he shows you how much he loves you for his actions exceed words. And know that while he is with you, whatever circumstance, he will continue to be with you. This is my prayer tonight. Short message, but a message of hope. Emmanuel, God is still with us. I believe that when you've invited Jesus Christ into your life, you're sealed by the blood. You're sealed. And you are His child forever and ever and ever. And you never have to be alone. I don't care if you're walking into a surgery. You're not alone. If you're finishing your last week on the job, you're not alone. If this is your last drive, you're not alone. God is with us, and if you have accepted Him, believed in Him, He will be with you for all of eternity. It's a beautiful picture. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you. Lord, I thank you so much. Because I believe regardless, whatever we're facing, whatever we have endured, Whatever road we have been down, we did not have to go through it alone. For I know that as I look back over the course of my life and this congregation looks back over the course of their life, they realize that they were not alone, that you were with them and helped them. Lord, I'm thankful for this moment right now. We need to be reminded you are with us. You said you never leave us. You said you never forsake us. And I'm thankful for this moment right now. And I am thankful that no matter what circumstance that my brothers and sisters have to be going through, while it may not be pleasant, while it may even be painful, we have a promise. And that promise is, is that you are with us. You never said it was going to be easy. You never said it would be without struggles. And you never said it would just come at ease. But you did say that you were with us. Thank you, Lord God, for that reminder. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, folks, as we...